I'm down in Worthing on the south coast, Worthing of all places, with um, the brilliant Travis Elbra, who more kind of like diligent viewers of the channel will remember from our, our video we made in Victoria Park in Hackney. Travis is from Worthing. He's written a fantastic book. Travis, we've got the name of your book. That's so embarrassing. Well, the writer's journey, or, the, or wish we were here. So, a, a book called Wish You Were Here about the English seaside. Oh, um, yeah. So, there's so, two books, not just one yeah. book. Well, there are, you know. <laughs> the writer's journey, and uh, I received a copy of this book, and I said, we've got to make a video, pick a chapter. Well, a lot of them are in the foreign lands, so we can't get there, but we thought we can get to Worthing. And my, I'll say what my impression of it is, and then Travis can give you the reality. Is it, we're, kind of, we're visiting Jane Austen's Worthing. And obviously there'll be the reality now with Travis. What are we, what are we doing today, Travis? We are tracking down Jane Austen's Worthing with any luck, or what's left of it. I mean, it was 1805, uh, so I think the town has changed somewhat since then. But, but Jane Austen wrote uh, her last novel, which was fin unfinished, was a book called Sanderton which was a, a satire of uh, seaside resorts or the booming of them on the coast in the early 19th century. And it's pretty certain that her, her model for the resort she was using was Worthing, which she visited in 1805 with her sister. Um, she availed herself of the action-packed things such as wicks, baths, uh, the reading rooms, and took part in lotteries. Uh, went to the church at Broadwater. Broadwater is kind of uh, in this direction. And in the novel, is, is sort of the model for old Sanderton, because Broadwater was the sort of bigger settlement originally. Let's explore the town, Travis. Yeah. Let's get down and explore uh, town. We'll probably need to go that way. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. I'm drawn right. that way. Why, why am I drawn, drawn that Because I have no directional sense. No. So this down here used to be the cellar bar, uh, which was, uh, it, it's, you know, had barrels in it and stuff and you know you would drink down there but it was also where my, me and a couple of friends ran our extremely short-lived psychedelic night which was taught information after the prisoner uh, and we ran it for precisely one week before we were, we were sacked. <laughs> um, I think people were expecting some sort of uh, jolly japes 60s night and they would uh, you know come down the stairs and be greeted with blasts of the watch band or something or other. <laughs> so. Uh, it didn't last very long, i.e. one week. Travis is far too humble to really big himself up, but he's an incredible kind of like cultural historian. He writes kind of like popular histories of all manner of stuff. I know a lot of you lot are really into transport, and so you all know Travis, I hope. If you don't, Frankly, I'm disappointed. He wrote like the book about the Route Master bus, the bus we loved. Hey, what about that? <laughs> Travis wrote that book. He wrote a book about London Bridge going to America, London Bridge in America. He wrote a book about the English relationship to the seaside, wish you were here. He wrote the history of the LP, Long Player Goodbye. It's one of his most recent popular histories was the history of spectacles, of glasses. He wrote a popular history of pretty much anything eventually by some point. But then he also does these books which are kind of compilations and extracts of historical writings as well and uh, does them thematically and for probably most of interest to this channel as well he's written a couple of books of the Atlas of uh, Vanishing Places. Travis what's the other one? It's the Atlas of Vanishing Places and the Atlas of uh, Vanishing Improbable Improbable Places. Improbable places, improbable places. Improbable places. Uh, yeah. Did you nearly forget? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens There's when you write. Few, you he, know, like, you he know. writes too many books. Not like me. He's not, <laughs> not one book every ten years. He's like one book every. I wish I had your every I six I had months. Your, I wish I had your work rate, John. To be right. honest, you know, you know I'd rather. Uh... <laughs> He's been writing a book whilst walking down the street. He won't stop. Uh, where, where are we, Travis? What are we so doing? we're 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 at what used to be. Well, it still is. Obviously, the scientists are here. So we're at Tevil Gate, um, and the Tevil is a stream. Uh, which used to run through this area, which has been coveted for, for many centuries. But Tevil Gate was called Tevil Gate because it, there used to be a turnpike here uh, connecting the oldest settlement of Broadwater this way with the new kind of emerging town of Worthing, which was becoming a resort in the early 19th century. Um, and so, and, but Tevil Road uh, used to be known as Vapours Lane in Jane Austen's time because obviously there's a stream there and so it was you know it was a quite a kind of marshy damp area so it, you know there were vapors which would come off from the stream and the surrounding land 
I mean, the, the thing about Worthing is, you know, it, it's big boom time, actually, is in the interwar years when uh, it starts to become more of a commuter place because, you know, roadways are opening up and stuff. So it's a, it's a Georgian resort, quite small. Victorian town, you know, burst of growth then, and then sort of big expansion into the suburbs and stuff um, in the interwar period, really, and then post-war. Uh, what's this, Travis? This is a classic quirky English seaside so this town. So is this is a solicitor's, A.R. Brown solicitors, and they've always had these. I used to think, actually, used to be, I used to get my hair cut. The, the T. Loris barbers used to be there, and we, my dad would bring me to get my hair cut here. And part of the treat of going to have my hair cut was because I could look at these models of, of the town. So they're, they're images of famous. Some some are still here. So this is the Dome Cinema, which you'll see later on the seafront, and. Um, which features quite heavily in my book Wish You Were Here because uh, that, that film from the 80s starring Emily Lloyd, a lot of the action takes place in the, in the, the Dome Cinema. Um, this is the Connaught Theatre, which we'll also have a look at, um, which actually began life as a cinema originally, the Connaught. But, and then there's some older buildings, some of which are like an older Hippodrome Theatre. This, um, this is also a classic one, this one here. Um, so this is the Ship Pub, which is uh, down on South Street. And when I was uh, a child, it was still a pub. Uh, I, I, I think it's a restaurant now or something or other, but yeah. And Laurel and Hardy, because they performed here. Um, actually, I'm not sure they did. They're in the movie, if anyone's seen the, the movie with Steve Coogan and John Riley. Uh, some of that was filmed in the Lido at Worthing. But I think they did actually come here in the early 50s. Don't quote me on that though. <laughs> <You know? laughs> This is, a, this is a beautiful Art Deco building here. Travis was saying it was a hi-fi shop. When I was growing up, it was a hi-fi shop, yeah. And, then it, and actually, there was a blockbuster video as well. So um, it had many incarnations before. It's now Sussex Beds and uh, Black Belt Leaders. So, um, yeah. Keeping the spirit of the karate club, which you probably got on video from blockbusters back in the day, <laughs> alive and well. <laughs> So what building is this, Travis? So this is the, this is the what was the new town hall uh, built by Charles Cowles Voisey, the architect, in a, in a sort of neoclassical uh, style with these great um, portico entrance, a very grand entrance. Um, and this replaced an old town hall, which was on South Street down there, which was a kind of pivotal feature of, of the Worthing and was the site of the famous skeleton riots, which took place in uh, 1884, which was when local people protesting about the arrival of the Salvation Army representatives marched on the town hall to sort of drive the Salvation Army out, claiming, uh, was it beer, baccy and... Um, was the other th beef. Was it beef, that's it, beef, beer and baccy as a, re as a reproachment to um, the Salvation Army, which uh, had, I think it was, um, Salvation Soup and something else was there. They had a similarly three-worded literature thing. They weren't fun, were they? No, they it, was a, it was an anti-t... I mean, it's, I, come, you know, I actually live in Stoke Newington, which is where the Booths, the founders of the Salvation Army, are, are buried in Abney Park. But um, they were sort of teetotalers, and they were trying to sort of clean up Britain, in a way, and remove the sort of more raffish parts of the world. I mean, some of that was not necessarily a bad thing if you have people, uh, you know, dying of alcohol abuse and, you know, falling into penury and so on, but they were pretty heavy-handed and, and saw it as a kind of spiritual mission. Um, and, you know, the, the people of Worthing responded negatively to this because they wanted their, you know, their beer backy and beef. Um, and so, they were, they were, I mean, it wasn't just Worthing, but Worthing was a famous example where there was a massive riot down by the old town hall. Um, and the, the old town hall was also sort of the centrepiece of what was known as um, the Battle of South Street, which was where in 1934 um, people marched against Mosley's fascists. Uh, Mosley was speaking at the pier, in the palace, uh, the pavilion pier building, uh, and, had, and he's had his black shirts in Worthing. Worthing actually had elected a fascist councillor, um, but there was a protest against it, and there was this, this Battle of South Street, uh, which took place roughly outside where the old town hall building was. Travis, where's this? What's this place? So we are we're at the Train of Thought record shop and gallery, ran by Kevin Huff, uh, who's a, a, 
a long-standing figure in uh, the Worthing music scene as far as organising gigs and also running this uh, fantastic uh, sort of wonder clamour of records and pop ephemera and even guitars. Uh, you can you know, buy music and you can make music here, I guess. <laughs> so, 80s band, the Thompson Twins. Surely this is where you mentioned your book, Long Player Goodbye, right? Yeah, uh, I don't know, sure. Actually, I don't know if I did put them in that, actually. <laughs> This is the Connaught Theatre in, in Worthing, um, which began life actually as a cinema before then, but um, from about the 1930s it was a, a cinema and done in this streamline style of architecture, very popular at seaside resorts to have architecture that looks like a kind of, you know, a, 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 an Atlantic liner. Um, but this is the Connaught Theatre where I, I, I saw um, the Theatre Complicité do a product performance here of Help I'm Alive in the early 90s. But in the early 80s it was threatened with closures due to cuts um, and there was a pair of twin brothers um, went on a hunger strike to try and save the theatre and it, their efforts were obviously successful because it, it's still here. It's interesting what Travis says in the book about Jane Austen coming to Worthing is that the relationship between the, the British and the coast is actually quite a new one in some ways, the idea of it being a fashionable place to go. Which I believe According to Travis's book, and I have the author here, so if I get it wrong, <laughs> I, you can just correct me. But um, it's like by Ge mad King George III, convalesced by the, by the seaside, and of course people went, oh, if the king's doing it, it must be all right. And so people started to come to the seaside. But before that, people were like, if they didn't live near the sea, they weren't going to travel to the coast. In the kind of, like, what we might call the modern era, the era when we start caring about that, obviously in the distant past, the distant, distant past, people this whether you'd have to take your dead for as far west as you can and bury them by the sea. But um, that's going back a couple of thousand years, so... <laughs> <laughs> In the scheme of things, not, relatively it's, recent. It's, relatively, like, yeah, so the Jane Austen thing is like yesterday. Yeah. Okay. I, was, I was thinking, which one could it be as we were walking along? And of course, it's the biggest one, isn't it? It's the one with the most ostentatious ironwork. So Harold Pinter lived here for, from 1962 to 1964. Um, and uh, if anyone's seen the film version of The Birthday Party uh, by William Friedkin, who later did The Exorcist, the opening section of the film uh, pans along Worthing seafront and you see the pier and the pavilion and some deck chairs uh, on the, the stones. But yeah, Pinter, the boy yeah. from Hackney. I say Hackney, Hackney, famously a Hackney boy, so Hackney yeah, up in Worthing. Hackney Downs School he went to uh, and lived on Hackney Downs Road. So yeah, the boy from Hackney done good as it were and was living here for a couple of years in this rather elegant uh, house in Ambrose Place. Ambrose, Ambrose Place, you know, you were saying about that development of the seaside towns, speculative builders would throw up these rather sort of grand houses for uh, affluent, unwell people to kind of take the waters by the sea and live, you know, in, in reasonable comfort in these stuccoed properties. <laughs> So this is the former old ship pub, which was a model of up by the station. And you can see the cro sailor in his crow's nest in his barrels still up there. So the, the fascia still remains, but you can get a, a different kind of seafaring, perhaps some sushi. There's a beautiful old um, Debenhams yeah. building here, a beautiful old department store, which is sadly all boarded up, awaiting a new life. Hopefully the, uh, hopefully the building's protected. This is the really beautiful Royal Arcade. I do love an old arcade. This is from 1925. And we finally made it down to the sea, down to the seafront. We're going to stop for a coffee and Travis will tell us more about the seafront. But so, I mean, I don't, and this speaks for itself, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, could, I could do the massage bit, not the yeah. acupuncture. I would just be a man sticking pins in you. This is the, the Dome Cinema, which was on our list. But initially it was where we were going to stop for a, for a coffee. But not now. This is the cover, is this the, is this the cover of your book, Travis? 
Yes, so I nicked the title of my book from uh, the film from about 1987 starring Emily Lloyd uh, as a young sort of teenager growing up in post-war Worthing. Um, and Tom Bell's character plays the projectionist who she has an affair with, who lives above the, the cinema here. So this is the Dome Cinema. And uh, one of the other characters that Emily Lloyd has a relationship with works at the bus garage, uh, which is just around the corner here. And so in a sense, there's an element like her romantic life is literally a street apart. Um, and also as a kid growing up, when you, when you would watch films in here, uh, I'm sure it's got better soundproofing now, but you know, you'd be watching something like the you know, Return of the Jedi or whatever else, and it would be like, you know, you know, may the force, and there'd be like a roar of a bus engine kind of as it was revving up next door. So this is Marie, Marine Place. So in Jane Austen's day in, in 1805, when she visited here, somewhere around here, there was Stamford's Marine Library which essentially was a, you know, a lending library where guests could come and read and borrow books and there might be social activities. And so Austin uh, checked out the wares of the Marine Library when she was here in uh, 1805. So this is, this is Bedford Row, which um, not much to see here now, but uh, this was where Warwick House, which was the biggest house in Worthing in Jane Austen's time, uh, and, uh, by the sort of big landowner and developer of the area of Worthing as a resort lived. And in Jane Austen's unfinished novel Sanderton, that becomes Trafalgar House, by, uh, owned by Mr. Parker, who's a similar figure who's creating this seaside resort of Sanderton, hoping to attract the affluent unwell to kind of wash up on the, the side of the seaside. I've only been to Worthing once before, and that was to film a comedy show at the uh, Theatre on the Pier. We will go to the Theatre on the Pier. I just really remember looking out from a window in, I was nowhere, it was, it was like I was up high in one of the back rooms. I don't know what I was doing there, <laughs> but there was a window from the theatre, and the one where you could look into the theatre and you could look out across the sea. It was, uh, it was kind of astonishing. Travis is going to show me, oh my god, look, empty house. Quite elegant fireplace in there, isn't it? And this is what, Georgia? This is Georgia, yeah. It, probably 1830s, maybe a little bit older, maybe 1840s. Uh, this is an impressive building. You think this could have been the Marine Library, perhaps? It's possible. I mean, it might... It, it's got I, a chapel-like look to yeah, it, hasn't it? Yeah, it has, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, but a very grand building all the same. I mean... Yeah, it's a beautiful building. Shelley House, now a O'Connor's Irish bar. Shelley House, the Shelley family had owned lots of land around here, but uh, apparently two of his earliest works were printed in that building there on Warwick Street, which is a, which was news to me. I didn't know that. You can see, you learn something all you the do, time. Learn something you all just, the time. You find it in the I landscape. Think, I don't think that blue plaque was up here when I lived down here, but that was quite some time ago, so that's probably why. I can't believe you wouldn't have noticed that. Well, you'd think so, but yeah. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. So um, this is, we're well, in Stanford Place, this is Stanford House or Stanford Cottage, which was where Jane Austen stayed in 1805, uh, staying here from September, possibly to the end of the year. She possibly spent Christmas here, it's, it's possible. Or well, they may have lingered that long. Um, so there we go, that's where jo Jane Austen dozed and, you know, the starting point of her seaside excursions, shall we say. And it's now a pizza restaurant. I think, I mean, it used to be a Pizza Express, but I don't actually know if it is anymore. It says Pizzeria. Uh, it's a Pizza Express. It is a Pizza Express, yeah. yeah. What was lovely is as we were stood outside the uh, Pizza Express, I, well, who I assume with the manager came out to talk to us about Jane Austen and tell us, you know, how it's, people come there, you know, to look at it. But it's, apparently they believe there's the ghost of Jane Austen upstairs. No, I'm, I'm going with that. Ghost of Jane Austen. We've, that's, we, that's not in Travis's book. He's back there bereft. He's like got his head in his hands now. The second edition of the paperback, the, the, the ghost is going to have to make its way into the book. We're going to go and get um, fish and chips now because I'm starving. <laughs> just had a, a fantastic 
fish and chip lunch over there at the Arcades Fish Restaurant. Now we're going to have a look at the pier. Let's look at this wonderful pier. What can you tell us about the pier, Travis? We've got an information board, so if you don't know anything, we can find out. <laughs> I rely on those information yeah. boards. I mean, the, I think this pier dates from the 1930s. The one before it was washed away in, in a storm, as was the one with piers. Um, so it's quite, you know, quite elegant looking. This is the atrium building. We'll go around the side here to get on. Pier there. At the end, the building at the end in the in the early 90s was a nightclub. I actually can't remember what it was called now, but uh, it was one particular occasion where the weather got so stormy that they kind of had to shut the pier and people were stuck kind of on the end of it <laughs> and couldn't come off because it was too rainy or something. Like This is what the uh, this is what the English seaside is really about, Travis. Yeah. Walking along a pier in the freezing cold, with the wind smashing into your face, and the, and you can feel the vigour there. You can feel yeah, the, the vigor, bracing yeah. air. It is bracing. With salt, with and the murky brown water. Yeah, exactly. Crashing in. This is yeah. this is this is yeah. what it's all about. There's nothing better. Well, also, than this. historically, people would come to the seaside in winter. Right. Uh, what, is that was that their thing? Yeah. What, why? Because uh, well, it was it was. It was, you know, it was, uh, was partly healthy, but it was also that it was considered warmer. I mean, it's true actually, you, the, the heat re is retained in the sea, so it's slightly warmer oh, on the coast. It's not being drawn in out. winter. So that, and because people were going there for their health, they weren't going to swim, they were going to be immersed in the water or to drink it and All stuff. Right. They would often go in the winter. Huh. And it's only really until the sort of, I mean, late Victorians, people are going in the summer, you know, bank holiday acts and all this sort of stuff. So people, you know, the, the gentry coming to the seaside for their health would come in the winter months. Jane Austen in 1805 comes from September to the end of the year, possibly spending Christmas Eve, not quite sure, but definitely until November or so. So she's here in a way for the autumn and winter months. She's not here for the, for the sun uh, because people didn't do sunbathing then because the sun was considered you know, dangerous and only really poor people were out in the sun getting browned because they were doing labor outside. Lovely to meet John and Kate back there who, who watch the videos every Sunday night. Lovely to meet you, John and Kate. So this is Beach House, uh, which was built in the 1820s, a uh, sort of grand Georgian uh, residence. And the early part of the 20th century was er uh, owned by a playwright called Edward Knoblock. Knoblock? Knoblock, I think his name was. Edward Knoblock. Um, and so quite, you know, the great and the good people, Arnold Bennett and J.B. Priestley, would visit him down here. Um, in the 1930s, particularly in 1936, uh, it, it came into its another use where it was used to house refugees from the Spanish Civil War and then during the Second World War it was requisitioned for sort of military uses but uh, it's been flat since the, I think the 1980s uh, but as, as you can see again it's like it's quite a Jane Austen with thinking about when Austen would have been I mean, a little later it's not built to the 1820s but you know where Austen was staying similarly you know you'd have had unparalleled views just facing directly out onto the sea with nothing else between it um, and the water. So that's the end of our, our, our exploration of Indeed. Jane Austen's Worthing and yeah. a lot more of Worthing besides. Thank you so much, Travis, for bringing My me down here. Yeah. It's been a remarkable day. It has. I've wanted yeah. to do like a walk around Worthing. Yeah. And it's been, it's been great. It's bracing now, the light's yeah. going, so it's time for us to wrap up. And so, as I always like to say, <laughs> if I'm with somebody else, I get a bit self-conscious about this, but obviously you go, why do you get self-conscious? You make these videos for thousands of people to watch. I don't know, but anyway, so this is just for you, this is not for Travis. As I always like to say, I look forward to seeing the next walk, wherever that may be. And I don't know where it's going to be, actually. I'm not sure there's a few candidates, and I know you're going to finish the Quaggy walk, and I feel like that's where I want to go, but I just might get the urge to do something else instead. So 
where, well, you know, wherever that may be. Hey, and, and buy Travis's books, great, great Christmas gifts. Any of them, their Atlas books, the Writer's Journey book that we've just been exploring there, Wish You Were Here About the Coast, The Bus We Loved, London Bridge in America. I mean, any of them, really. Mm -hmm.